I'm Kat Timpf. I'm Bill Hemmer. I'm Harris Faulkner. And this is the Fox News Rundown. Thursday, March 31st, 2022. I'm John Saucier. One of the things I love about Fox News is that we have news resources everywhere. And wherever the news is, we have someone to send there. When the news is a war, that someone is Trey Yinks. Trey was able to join me in studio today in New York after having spent the last few weeks in Ukraine. Understanding the long-term impact on Ukrainian civilians and people who are trying to get out of the way will be significant in our coverage. And I think we will try to follow the lives of these people that we've talked to and that we've met in order to tell their story in a comprehensive way. This is the Fox News Rundown, War on Ukraine. We're speaking today with Fox's Trey Yinks, who is fresh back from the Ukraine. Trey, last time I talked to you, you were somewhere in Kiev, the capital city. And I remember hearing a shell going off outside of your window. Now you're here in New York. The only thing happening outside the window is people blowing uh, horns, cabs, yelling, all this stuff. What a crazy difference just for you as far as being in Ukraine. And now you're back here in the United States. What is that like? How are you feeling? Yeah, it's a juxtaposition. You have basically a city and a country that is now consumed by war. So the sounds that you hear in Kyiv while we're covering this conflict are consistent explosions in the distance, incoming and even outgoing artillery. You hear airstrikes, you hear sirens wailing, warning people to get underground, gunfire, and then you return to the United States and it's life as normal. And so I think it gives you some good perspective about what life is like for the people there. But it also helps you understand how out of place that is for civilians who are caught in this conflict. Millions have fled, around 4 million according to the UN, but there are still 90% of the people of Ukraine in country and at risk amid this conflict. How do you process that, though? How do you go from being in a war zone and seeing just the worst parts of humanity to all of a sudden being back here in the United States where we're kind of taking our freedom and our everyday just thing for granted? What's that like? Yeah, I mean, I have my own process of reintegrating into society. I think that I'm used to it now, covering war around the world. And each conflict is a little bit different, but I meditate, I work out, I talk to friends about the experience, and I reflect on what we've seen and who we've talked to. And then I get back to work. I mean, I love this job, so it's very difficult for me to stay away from the story for too long. And I try to set limits on how much I'm on social media and on Twitter and reading updates about the war, but I'm curious. And even if I wasn't working, I'd probably be reading about this stuff anyway. So it's kind of difficult to totally detach from it, but I think it is good to take a pause, take a breath, reset, and then get ready to go again. So that's my next question. Do you plan to go back to Ukraine? Yeah, I think this war is going to go on for a long time. So eventually I'll end up back there and continue my coverage. But I think for people who are fleeing Ukraine, there are so many stories that as an industry we have to follow and continue. And I think that there are the immediate stories and the aftermath of these strikes and the war. But understanding the long-term impact on Ukrainian civilians and people who are trying to get out of the way will be significant in our coverage. And I think we will try to follow the lives of these people that we've talked to and that we've met in order to tell their story in a comprehensive way. We're speaking today with Fox News foreign correspondent Trey Yanks. He's just back from Ukraine. He spent weeks over there. This is not your first time in a war zone, Trey, though. We had you in Afghanistan for the American withdrawal there at the end, which got really nasty. In that time, I saw you riding around in the back of trucks with Taliban members, and my mind is just blown to think, wow, we have an American reporter over there doing this stuff. This time, you're in a full-on war zone with tanks, guns, airstrikes, everything else. Can you just talk about the difference between those two from what you had this summer to now this winter? Yeah, I think you always have to remember that you're dealing with people. And so even if they're members of the Taliban in Kabul after the city's taken over, They have some reason why they're there. They have some incentive. They feel and experience emotions. They have family members. And although some of them have committed heinous acts of violence, they still have a reason for why they do what they do. And when you understand that, and then also try to let them understand that you are not there to threaten them or to hurt them, but simply to tell the story of what's happening, it can give you some incredible access as a journalist in the world to simply have a reputation of telling the truth and giving people a fair shot to speak. 
I think those approaches are applicable in Ukraine. I think the war zone, though, is, is quite different. We weren't really covering an active conflict in Afghanistan. There were threats and there were concerns from groups like ISIS-K and, and Taliban factions like the Haqqani Network, but it wasn't tanks in the streets. It wasn't daily airstrikes that were targeting positions all around us. And I think that's the major difference. And when you're in a war zone, there's a, a familiar tension that exists 24-7. And that tension can't get in the way of you doing your job, but it also doesn't really allow the mind to rest because you have to constantly be prepared for something to go wrong or for a threat or an attack. And while the two war zones and conflict areas are, are different based in part just on the timeline of where they were, Afghanistan, the war was coming to an end. It was wrapping up. Ukraine, we were there the minute the war started. We were actually there before and in Kiev as the Russians started to strike it. And so to be there during that time, we understood how significant that event was. We're speaking today with Fox News foreign correspondent Trey Inks on his experience reporting on the war in Ukraine. We've got more coming up next. Okay, I want to take it back to Ukraine now because you mentioned you were there from the buildup, the beginning, and now you just recently left Ukraine. We've heard all sorts of reports, and we talk ad nauseum all day long about what's happening there. We get reports from the Pentagon. We get other reporters. You were there. You were there for a lengthy period of time, and you weren't just hanging out in the capital city. You moved around. You saw a lot of things. What is your, having just been there, assessment of not only how this war is going, but how the Ukrainian people are holding up in the face of this superpower attacking them? They're certainly resilient, and those who can fight are pledging to do so, and they're calling on the international community for even more military support. But the reality is so many people's lives have been upended, and they don't know if they'll ever return home. So while there is this storyline, and you see it in the international press, and it is true, of the Ukrainian resistance against this invasion, this violation of sovereignty, there is another story that's unfolding at the same time, and that is millions of people having to leave their homes, being internally displaced, externally displaced, having to leave Ukraine as a whole. And these two things are going on at the same time. And so there are more bloody days ahead, unfortunately, for Ukraine. There will be a continued effort to reclaim territory if the Russians do pull back in their offensive. I don't think we're looking at a scenario where the Ukrainians just give up territory to the Russians with nothing in return. But it's it's difficult to predict out what that's going to look like because this war could go on for a very long time. We may, on day 36, as we speak, be looking at the very beginning of a long drawn out conflict, not only between Russia and Ukraine, but there is that possibility of other players being dragged in. We're speaking today with Fox's Trey Yanks, foreign correspondent. He was in Ukraine covering the war. He's been in many hot zones for us over the years doing just that. Now, Trey, you were there for a good long while this time. Part of your job is going out, not only getting the story, but getting the feeling and hearing from people who are caught up in this. I'm sure you could already fill a book with the experiences you've had, but is there anything special that you saw or people you talked to over there than those experiences that you would share with us? Oftentimes when I'm asked this question after a war, I like to tell a really uplifting story that stuck with me. The one interview that really stuck with me was with a woman named Evgenia Antonienko. And she was fleeing the town of Erpin, which was right where the front line started when Russian forces started to attack Kiev. And there were shells exploding around this area as she was fleeing with her family. And she described to me what really was the worst day of her life. And she basically described a nightmare as she tried to get out. She said to me, it's like your life is broken forever and you have no hope. And those words really stood out to me because I think they're representative for many Ukrainians. And you just looked into her eyes and she described trying to shield the eyes of her daughter as they fled Irpin because there were bodies in the streets. And when you meet someone like that and when you just sense their presence around you and, and you understand that they are terrified but doing everything they can to save their loved ones and make sure their children get to safety, you empathize with them, but you can never truly understand their situation. We're there. We're observing it. We are experiencing it alongside her. We 
feel the explosions nearby. We hear the blasts. But to understand what it's like to leave your entire life behind, it's something that we will try to convey the story to the viewers, but it's something that I think about a lot. Will we ever truly understand what that feels like? And I don't think we ever will. No, it's hard to because it's one thing to see it and to talk about it, but when it's your life, it's a whole other thing. And I really appreciate you sharing that story because you can kind of, I guess, feel that a little bit and especially so. That's just one example, but you're talking about millions of people who've had to do just that. Fox's Trey Yinks, fresh from Ukraine. Thanks for being with us on your podcast, Fox's Rundown, The War on Ukraine. Thanks for having me. You've been listening to the Fox News Rundown. Rundown. Stay up to date by subscribing to this podcast at foxnewspodcasts.com. And for up-to-the-minute news, go to foxnews.com. Love Fox News? Click the subscribe button to get more of the news and opinion you trust. And click the Fox News Rundown playlist for the latest episodes.